بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد Continue with the Adab al-Mufrad, the Imam al-Bukhari, Abi Abdullah, Rahimah Allah Ta'ala. We have the section 87, Hadith 166. 167. Section 88. Babun man khatama ala khadimihi makhafata su'i al-dhan. Haddathana Bishr ibn Muhammad in qala akhbarana Abdullah, akhbarana Abu Khaldat an Abi al-Aliyya. قال كنا نؤمر أن نختم على خادم ونكيل ونعدها كراهية أن يتعود خلق سوء أو يظن أحدنا ظن سوء أبو العالية رحمه الله تعالى من ونودة مفسرين ونودة تابعين رفيع بن مهران إزنين he said, we used to be ordered an nakhtima ala al-khadim. Khatim ala al-khadim is to seal off and to finish off al-amti'ah and the things that he buys and the things that he's in charge of. Wa nakilu wa na'udduha. And to weigh it and to count it. Yani, in other words, if they have a slave, they would weigh and count and always have in check the stuff that he's in charge of. And that might sound a little strange for the Sahaba to be doing that. But this man, Ila Bi Huraira, Radi Allah, Innahu kana ya'uddu qita al lahmi ida jabah al khadim min al suq. If he would send his slave to buy some meat, whatever amount, and he returns, Abu Huraira will count how much he returned with. If he told him go buy 10 pieces, Abu Huraira will count those 10 pieces to make sure that he came back with 10 pieces. That might sound strange for people like the companions who sacrificed everything في سبيل الله but إذا عرف السبب بطل العجب once you know the reason then you will understand and there will be no wonder listen why he said أو they say about him كان يعد قطع اللحم إذا جاب الخادم من السوق ثم لا يأكل حتى يجلس العبد معه ويأكل معه. and he will he will count the pieces of meat and then he will not eat until the slave sits with him and eat with him. he was the problem. why you're counting after him if you're gonna make him sit and eat with you? let him eat whatever he wants. but in the way. كما يقول أبو العالية كراهية أن يتعودوا خلق سوء أو يظن أحدنا ظن سوء because we were afraid they were afraid the صحابة that one of those slaves will get the habit of stealing so he says what oh they're not going to count what I'm bringing oh they're not going to check what I'm in charge of oh they're not going to weigh so they, they send him to buy 10 pounds and they come back with 8 pounds and they keep the rest, huh? money. So with that check, they stay in check, okay? Or that's one reason. So they can make sure that the slave does not learn bad habits. So how much they're concerned about the manners of the slave. Or, أو يظن أحدنا ظن سو. Or, they used to do that, so there is no place for the shaitan to come into the head of one of them and say, well, this meat looks like less than what I asked him to bring. Oh, this is all you brought, I asked you. So the shaitan start playing and putting doubts in the mind. So they would count, so they will close the door in front of the shaitan 
to throw any doubt in their hearts toward the slave. And to imagine, this is a slave that they own. They own. Imagine how this deen and how this religion has taught the followers of it how to manage everything in the sense to protect the society from these hard feelings toward each other. Look how many Muslims today, they stand and they hug and they kiss and they love each other and this. And they stand with each other and they travel with each other, but always you find something in the heart of one of them toward the other. And it all might be built on assumptions and false assumptions, or he saw him one time like this, or he heard something about him, and it's all false. So look at the concern to keep their hearts clean and to keep their hearts straight toward their brothers in Islam even though they were their slaves. So that's why they used to do that. Wada again from the issue or the idea that we spoke about Taghir al-Mafahim, changing the perceptions. Because from the first perception you think he's counting because he's cheap or he's stingy. But in reality he's counting huh? for other reasons. He's counting to make sure to make sure that the shaitan does not throw anything in his heart toward his brother. And this is khuluq hamid, and this is a great manner that Muslims should learn. And if I have something toward my brother, if I feel something, if I heard something, I should not rush to assume, I should not rush to build assumption and judgment. I go to him straightforward. And do not let the shaitan build that tree of doubt. That's how the shaitan starts. He throw that, first it's a thought. And then it's like a seed. He throws it in the heart. And then if you nourish it, and if you take care of it, it's going to start growing until it becomes a tree of doubt. And that leads to what? To mistrust. That leads to hate. That leads to baghina. You wait for him to make the smallest mistake and then you launch at him. So that is khuluq or great manners that Muslims should learn. Bab man adda ala khadimihi makhabat al حدثنا أبو نعيم قال حدثنا إسرائيل عن أبي إسحاق عن حارثة بن عن حارثة بن مضرب عن سلمان قال إني لا أعد العراق على خادمي مخافة الظن سلمان رضي الله عن الفارسي says and Salman if you walk in his house you find nothing you find nothing so these people were not doing this for the sake of money or to or this mistrust. He said, رضي الله عنه, إني لا أعد العراق. العراق هو جمع عرق, the plural of عرق. والعرق is the piece of bone that still has some meat on it. So he's counting the bone. He's counting the bone. على خادمي مخافة الظن. ما لا ليس مخافة بخل أو شح. He's afraid he counts the bones. So he will not allow the shaitan to put any doubt in his heart. So you see how these sahaba concerned, huh? even about the doubts, not about ideas, about doubts, not about assumptions and building assumptions in the doubt. It's even about doubts they were so, so concerned because they were so concerned about their hearts. حدثنا حجاج قال حدثنا شعبة قال عنبانا أبو إسحاق قال سمعت حارثة بن مضرب قال سمعت سلمان إني لا أعد العراق خشية الظن والذي قبله مخافة الظن عند سيم أثر عند سيم مين وقيل ظن السوء هو غيبة السر ظن السوء غيبة السر من تدرس غيبة ها Namima, Riba is backbiting, isn't it? And that is when you talk about your brother behind his back with something he hates. Ghan is su, and that is in public. Riba backbiting is in public. In other words, you utter, you say it to someone loud. Ghan is su, the doubt, the bad doubt, huh? when you doubt your brother, you have doubt in your heart. That is secret backbiting. That's backbiting, but in your heart, it's a secret backbiting. كما قيل ظن السوء غيبة السر. Okay. The Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم says, إياكم الظن فإن الظن أكذب الحديث. Be 
beware of doubt because doubt is the worst of lies the worst of lies so and keep it away from all these things and if you have any doubt of your brother go to him go to him but do it in a right way in a good manner because again not every doubt you should go to him you should get you should train yourself to get rid of it because you have to understand when you go to your brother man, about every doubt you have toward him that's going to create something in his heart toward you why this guy is doubting me all the time why he doesn't trust me okay so you have to balance and you have to be wise and you have to be very wise in the way that you figure out the way you can get rid of these doubts and if you are someone with a heart that is accustomed and addicted to doubt people ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cure your heart باب أدب الخادم حدثنا أحمد بن عيسى قال حدثنا عبد الله بن وهب قال أخبرني مخرمة بن بكير عن أبيه قال سمعت يزيد بن عبد الله بن قصيط قال أرسل عبد الله بن عمر غلاما له بذهب أو بورق صرفه فأنظر بالصرف فرجع إليه فجلده وجيعا وقال اذهب فخذ الذي لي ولا تصرف عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه this section باب أدب الخادم the previous section is titled the section who counts huh? who counts on his, sir, on his slaves fearing down this Adab al Khadim, the discipline of the servant or the slave. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu an sent a slave for him with gold or silver. He had been a warik. Warik wa silver. Fasarafa. Fa'amdara bis sarfi. So this servant or this slave did a transaction with this gold or silver. فأنظر بالصرف أنظر يعني أخر which means when it comes to gold and silver when you sell it okay or you exchange it it has to be يدا بيد يدا بيد and if it's from the same type it has to be سواء بسواء يدا بيد يعني if you have 10 grams of gold and you go to sell it it's haram and let's say you're gonna sell it for hundred dollars it's haram for the buyer to tell you hmm, I'll buy it from you give it to me and tomorrow I'll give you the hundred dollars that's haram you have to collect the price when it's, you're dealing with gold and silver Yadan biyad. That's the meaning of hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yadan biyad. So you give him the gold, he gives you the money right there. Why? To protect the hearts from hate. How is that? Because this gold, uh, 10 grams, that $100 today, tomorrow might be $1,000. So when you go tomorrow to collect your $100, what goes in your heart? That look, this guy gonna make nine hundred dollars. He didn't even pay me the hundred dollars. But that is, huh? Malanatsu. That is a door for grudges and hates in the hearts. So when it comes to these things that fluctuate in price, huh? So often, it's very important to understand Hadith in Nabi Sallam. Yadan biyad, yadan biyad. So you sell, you collect right there. Now, if you are giving gold for gold then it must be yet and be yet right there and it must be equal in amount equal in amount so you cannot go and say this is old gold huh? I got 20 grams old gold and give it to the jeweler and he gives you 10 grams in new gold and a haram okay this is forbidden you want to get 10 grams of new gold go sell your 20 grams of old gold and buy the 10 grams of I'm exchanging gold for gold, silver for, for silver, different amount, that is forbidden. So Ibn or this servant of Ibn Umar did that, okay, did that. 
So Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu faraja. So when he returned ilayhi fajaladahu wajiyan. So Umar, Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu whipped him. Whipped him for committing this because this is riba. This transaction is, is riba. Different type of riba. Okay? There is riba nasiya. Riba nasiya is the riba that I lend you thousand dollars for a month and you return eleven hundred. Okay? Hada is muhu riba nasiya. Because nasiya ta'khir. And nasiya means to delay. Okay? This riba is called riba al fadl. Or that is riba al fadl. I lend you a thousand and you give me back eleven hundred. And then there is riba nasiya, the same thing. If you need it for a year, then you, I charge you this. Riba al fadl is I give you 10 grams of gold, you give me 11 grams. That is riba al fadl. Okay? Very important. So that's two types of riba. Huh? He will think that haram to eat riba, to take riba, but it's okay to give it. This is misguidance. Haram to take it, and haram to give it, and haram to witness it, and haram to help in it, huh? haram to support it. Very important. So Ibn Umar radiallahu and whipped him because this is not an easy man. This is riba. Hmm? This is riba. And when it comes to discipline and whipping, you cannot exceed 10 whips. Uh, ten lashes. And you should understand that this lash or these lashes for the sake of discipline rather than teaching, rather than revenge, rather than revenge. Okay? Haddathana Muhammad ibn Salam. Qala akhbarana Abu Mu'awiyah anil a'mashi. عن إبراهيم التيمي عن أبيه عن أبي مسعود البدري أبو مسعود البدري صحابي وصحابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم but he's not he did not fight in بدر من غزوة بدر but سمي بدريا لأنه نزل بدرا because he lived in in the area called بدر and still there in this area so he's called بدري قال كنت أضرب غلاما لي هذا Sahabi was beating, huh, hitting a slave for him. فَسَمِعْتُ مِنْ خَلْفِي صَوْطًا إِعْلَمْ أَبَا مَسْعُودٍ لَلَّ اللَّهُ أَقْدَرُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْكَ عَلَيْكَ إِعْلَمْ أَبَا مَسْعُودٍ لَلَّهُ أَقْدَرُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْكَ عَلَيْكَ فالتفت فإذا هو رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قلت يا رسول الله فهو حر لوجه الله فقال أما إن لو لم تفعل لمستك النار أو للفحتك النار. As he was beating up his slave, he heard from behind him. This is Sahabi. He heard from behind him someone telling him, "No, Abu Masud." His name is Abu Masud. So someone telling him from behind, "No, Abu Masud. Allah Azza wa Jal." is more powerful on you than you are powerful on this slave. Allah is over you more than you're over this slave. So he turned around Abdullah, uh, uh, Abu Mas'ud Badr, it was the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was telling him that. And if you think you have power over this, Allah has more power over you. So immediately this Sahabi and those people huh, knew Allah Azza wa Jalla and knew what Allah wants from them. So immediately he said, he is free for the sake of Allah. You're talking about wealth when you free a slave. You're talking about money. Yeah, money. I don't want it anymore. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, if you did not do that, if you did not free him, then you would have been entitled for the hellfire. You would have been entitled for the hellfire. Now that is not to say because from previous hadith, you see that it's permitted and it's actually a must sometimes to discipline and hit the slave. 
maybe Abu Mas'ud رضي الله عنه was not hitting him the way he's supposed to. Maybe he was extra tough on him. Maybe he was not hitting him for the right reason. Allahu Akbar. But the point is hmm, that when you discipline, you discipline even in Islam, huh, the rules, the way you discipline and the way you hit. وَهَذَا حَدِيثِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إنما يرحم الله من يرحم الناس. وقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم: إرحم الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن. ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء. The mercy of Allah عز وجل is entitled for those who show mercy to the creation of Allah. أما أنت you have no mercy to the creation of Allah and then you come on the day of judgment and expect Allah to have mercy on you. هي ها. وهذا يعني من جنس العمل جزاء من جنس العمل what you like to be done unto you you do unto unto others وهذه لله أقدر عليك هذه اللام بالتوكيد for emphasis الله عز وجل is indeed has power over you more than the power you have over this poor slave باب لا تقل قبح الله وجهه حدثنا حجاج قال حدثنا ابن عيينة عن أبي عجلان عن سعيد عن أبي هريرة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تقولوا قبح الله وجهه دون أسير ها قبح الله وجهه تقبيح ها is to say ها may Allah curse his face to curse him in his face that is uh, to curse his face. May Allah make his face ugly. May Allah shame his face. And you do not insult your brother. Physically, you do not beat him. That is insult physically when you beat him, as we have seen. You also do not insult him mentally. That is by cursing him with the word of the Allahu Wajah. We will see the reason for that in the next hadith. Haddathana Abdullah ibn Muhammad, qala haddathana ibn Uyayna, an ibn Ajilan, an Sa'idin, an Abi Hurayrata, qala la taqulanna qabbaha Allahu Wajahak, wa wajha man ashbaha wajhak. فإن الله عز وجل خلق آدم عليه الصلاة والسلام على صورته. That's one. يعني ترى مثلاً عند بعض إلى المنظر. He goes there. He wants to curse someone. إلى المنظر. Now what curse your look and everyone who looks like you. He will say that. And that is, and it's a it's custom sometimes. In some areas, they're so accustomed to say that. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Do not say qabbah Allah wajhak wa wajha man ashbah wajha." Do not say, "Huh? May Allah curse your face and the one whose face looks like your face." فإن الله عز وجل because Allah عز وجل created Adam. على صورته created Adam in his image now his here huh, we need to understand what it means العلماء have different opinions Ibn Khuzayma rahimahullah said in his image his refers to the one who's cursed العلماء رفضوا العلماء said that doesn't make sense يعني far from yeah, in other words, huh? do not say, may Allah curse your face because Allah created Adam huh? in the image of the one who's cursed. وعندك الخطابي أو ابن حزم قبل هذا His refers to Allah. فإن الله خلق آدم على صورته على يعني صورة بمعنى ملك الله. يعني على الصورة التي يملكها الله 
مثلا تقول بيت الله كتاب الله ها ارض الله ماشي that doesn't mean بيت الله يعني the house where Allah lives لا but it's the house that belongs to Allah so صورته يعني the image that belongs to Allah not Allah image that is ابن حزم والرازي وابو سليمان الخطابي سيد الضمير يعود الى ادم عليه السلام ان الله عز وجل created ادم in the way he created him يعني in other words ادم was created ها huh? just like the way we have the description of his height and his width and his face and his look very much ما زال ابن ادم يتناقص since Allah created Adam, the size of the human beings are decreasing. Allah خلق Adam 60 ديرا في السماء. 30 cubit or 60 cubit. Hi. And he still, since then, been decreasing. What the answer to the Darwinism? Clear answer that Allah created Adam the way he is, the way we are today. We were not apes. We were not insects. We were not cells. And then something big bang and we started developing. That's marfu. This is the fact. According to this opinion. That his refers to Adam. Allah created Adam this way. So when you come to curse someone, how could you curse his face? Huh? And insult his face? And this is how Allah created Adam. So you're insulting Adam. And the fourth opinion. And al-jumhur. رأي most of the علماء الضمير عائد إلى الله his image يعني in the image of Allah عز عز وجل so the bottom line وهذه when it comes to the names and attributes of Allah there are three fundamentals أهل السنة والجماعة stick to and you do not go beyond do not cross the limit it comes to the Isma, the Sifat, there are four, three guidelines you have to stick to. And you cannot go beyond that because this is from the unseen. So there is no place for Ijtihad. Huh? There is no place for you to say, uh, it could be like this, or it might be that. If there is Dalil or not, or do not talk about. There is Dalil or do not talk about. Number one, huh? that we believe in what the Dalil, the Quran and the Sunnah mention. Ijab, Ithbat, Unaf. If the ayah said he's like this, then we believe he's like this. If the hadith says he's not like that, then he's not like that. If the ayah says he's not like that, then he's not like that. If the hadith says he's like that, then he's like that. That's number one. In other words, you need a Dalil. If it comes to Allah, you need a proof. Dalil. Alright, number two, تنزيه الله عز وجل أن تشبهه بأحد من خلق. You have to exalt Allah عز وجل, transcend him to think that he looks like any of his creation. There is nothing that Allah created is like Allah. ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير. Number two. Number three, it does not matter how much you try, you can never find how. Kaifi. You will never be able to find it because you are not told about it. And that means how Allah has hand. How is the hand of Allah? How is Allah over the throne? How is Allah sees everyone? How is Allah hears everyone? How is Allah comes down in the third night? How is Allah over his throne all the time, yet he comes down to the lowest heaven in the last third of the night? All that, do not allow your mind to take you. You will never be guided to that, because he does not want to share it. And it's something beyond your mind. This is Allah. Huh? You got people throwing a hadith right and left, because they say, how could Allah? Allah is over the throne, all this. And then in the hadith that he comes down in the last third of the night to the lowest heaven. So how could he be over the throne and then come down? And that means he leaves the throne. What's the problem here? The problem is those who think that way, they thought Allah is like them. 
They thought Allah is like them. Ahna, ahna, we're not. Remember the second line. Allah is not like any. We know. Very important. So the point or the, the hikmah from this, huh? do not curse your brother and tell him or anyone, قَبَّحَ Allah وَجْهَكْ Huh? Because of this, because this is the creation of Allah, and you shouldn't huh? be cursing the creation of Allah. Babun So as we said, since the deen forbids to insult the face mentally, now it's insult, it's forbidding to insult the face physically. That's why it's forbidden to hit on the face. حدثنا خالد كل هذه أداب these are manners that most Muslims do not stick to. Some people say, I don't know why you chose this book or this topic. We know it. Really? Is it in practice? Is it in our life? يكفي أن هذا أن تقرأ حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. إذا you're sitting reading, listening to the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that should be enough if there was enough love. قال النبي قال النبي. Whether you know it or you don't know, it's enough that you're sitting. Ha, when most people are asleep or disobeying Allah right now, Muslims and non-Muslims, you're sitting saying, he, ha. Time after time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every time you hear his name. Haddadana Khalid ibn Makhlid. So this section, let him avoid hitting the face. Haddadana Khalid ibn Makhlid, qala haddadana Suleyman ibn Bila, qala haddadani Muhammad ibn Ajilan, qala akhbarani Abi wa Sa'idun, an Abi Urayrata, radiyallahu anhu, anin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, إذا ضرب أحدكم خادمة فليجتني بالوجه. If one of you hits his slave, let him avoid the face. This is a slave. This is a slave. Imagine the child, and imagine the wife, and imagine the daughter, and imagine huh? the orphan that you're in charge of, and imagine the relatives that you're in charge of and your guardian of. This is a slave you own. The Prophet said, if one of you hits his slave, let him avoid the face. Let him avoid the face. So, do not insult mentally the face and let him avoid the face. Do not insult physically the face because this is, the face is an honor. Huh? The face is your huh? title. That's why sujood is the greatest point when the person is so close to Allah. Because he's putting his face and the most precious part of his body on the floor. To show humility and submission to Allah Azza wa Jal. Very important. So you see how Islam came to preserve even faces and limbs and faculties and a'za. So imagine about hearts and souls and blood. And then they come back to say, your deen is this and your deen is that and your deen is violent and terrible. Allah, it's your deen of that is, your faith and your principles, not this deen. This deen is deen of mercy. But at the same time, this deen is tough and does not tolerate injustice. That's what they cannot, and they cannot understand. Because their false acclamation and or their false claims and that we are human rights and we're merciful. They do not differentiate between someone innocent and someone tyrant. Show me your mercy toward tyrants. Huh? You should have showed us mercy toward bin Laden then. Showed us mercy toward Saddam Hussein. As you always singing, mercy, mercy and peace and turn the other cheek. All nonsense. All nonsense. Hmm? When you put things out of context, you don't get the desired results. There is time you cannot use. Huh? There is time we use that as they resemble the 
the olive branch, there is time you use the sword. In the place of the nada, in the place of the sword, that does not get you the result you want. هذا دين الله هذا دين الإسلام حدثنا خالد قال حدثنا سفيان عن ابن عن أبي الزبير عن جابر قال مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بجابر سعي عبد الله هذا دين الله قد رسم يدخن من خران قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعن الله من فعلها لا يسمن أحد الوجه ولا يضربن Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was standing and an animal passed by an animal forget about you an animal passed by that it was uh, the face was tamped what they do uh, is this, they eat a mark. Uh, let's say you have a farm. So, and your, your cows and your this graze in a land, open land. And others have also their animals graze. So, yeah, to fear that it might be mixed or stolen or this, they go and they seal it. They stamp it. Stamp it. Uh, let's say you have a stamp and you stand, they eat it and they stamp it. This is permission or permitted to be done to the animal in any place other than the face to mark it. So this animal was passed by the Prophet وسلم, and it stamped with the heat in its face. Huh? To the point where the heat, the, uh, the smoke is coming out of the nose of the sun. To the torch. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعن الله من فعلها. May Allah curse the one who did this. In other words, huh? in other words, كي في الوجه يستحق صاحبه اللعن من الكبائر. When the Prophet would say that, that means it's a major sin. A major sin to stamp with heat huh, the animal's face. Major sin. لعن الله من فعل يعني الله will take out of his mercy the one who does this. Because the one who does that obviously doesn't have mercy toward this animal. So he who does not have mercy toward the creation of Allah isn't entitled for the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يسيمن أحد الوجه ولا يضربن No one should stand, uh, he'd stand the face or hit the face, hit the, the face. So this is with the animals, with the animals. So imagine with the humans that Allah Azza wa Jal has honor. باب من لطم عبده فليعتقه من غير إيجاب. The one who smack or who slap his slave on the face, let him free, but without إيجاب. يعني he is not obligated to let him free, but it's recommended. And we pass by the hadith of Abu Masroud al-Badri. حدثنا آدم قال حدثنا شعبة قال حدثنا حسين قال سمعت هلال بن يساف يقول كنا نبيع البزة. في دار سويد بن مقرن فخرجت جارية فقالت لرجل شيئا فلطمها ذلك الرجل فقال له سويد بن مقرن ألطمت وجهها لقد رأيتني سابع سبعة وما لنا إلا خادم فلطمها بعضنا فأمره النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يعتقها أن يعتقها anyway the, the story is Hilal ibn Yusaf Hada says we were selling al-bazz, al-bazz is kal-harir or some type of clothing in the house of Suwaid ibn Muqar, in a sahabi. So a woman, a slave woman was around, she went out and she got slapped by her owner 
on the face. So Suwaid ibn Muqarrin asked this man, you slap her on the face? He said, yes. So he told him, Suwaid ibn Muqarrin said, لَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ نِي سَابِعَ سَبْعَ And he was one of seven brothers. قال Suwaid ibn Muqarrin رضي الله عنه. And we had one servant, one servant. And one of us, فَلَطَمَهَا بَعْضُنَا Some one of us slapped her in the face. So the Prophet ordered him to free her, to free Okay? حدثنا عمرو بن عون ومسدد قال حدثنا أبو عوان عن فراس عن أبي صالح عن زادانا عن ابن عمر قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من لطم عبده أو ضربه حدا لم يأته فكفارته عدقه من غير إيجاب هذه من غير إيجاب أنا ضبتها يعني And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is what the ulama agreed on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever slapped his slave, لطم عبده أو ضربه, or beat him with no crime. Beat him for no reason. Perhaps that was whatever Mas'ud, when he freed the slave with the Prophet and caught him. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who slaps on the face his slave? or uh, beat him for no reason, then the expiation of that kafara is to let him free. But again, it's not mandatory. حدثنا مسدد قال حدثنا just want to read this hadith and this section and we're done inshallah. حدثنا مسدد قال حدثنا يحيى بن سعيد عن سفيان قال حدثني سلمه بن كوهين قال حدثني معاذ بن سويد بن قرن قال لطمت مولى لنا لطمت مولا لنا ففر فدعاني ابي فقال اقتص كنا ولد مقر سبعه لنا خادم فلطمها احدنا فذكر ذاك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال ذرهم فليعتقوا فقيل للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس لهم خادم غيرها قال فليستخدموها فاذا استغنوا خلوا سبيلها وهذا الدليل that it's recommended to free him. The same story of سويد بن مقرن but with more details that when they told the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, let them free her. So they said, well, this is the only servant we have. So the Prophet ﷺ instructed them, you let them use her. And once they don't need her, let them let her go. حدثنا عمر بن مرزوق أخبرنا شعبة قال لي محمد بن المنكدر ما أسمه فقلت شعبة قال حدثني أبو شعبة عن حدثني أبو شعبة عن سويد بن مقرن المزني وراء رجل بطم غلامة فقال أما علمت أن الصورة محرمة يعني الوجه محرم. He saw a man slapping the face. So he said, didn't you know that the face is haram to hit? رأيتني وإني سابع سبعة إخوة على عهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما لنا إلا خادم فلطمه أحدنا فأمرنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن نعتقه أو أن نعتقه. The same story. حدثنا موسى قال حدثنا أبو عوان قال حدثنا فراس عن أبي صالح عن زادان أبي عمر قال كنا عند ابن عمر فدعا بغلام له كان ضربا. فكشف عن ظهره فقال ايوجع قال لا فاعتقه ثم رفع عودا من الارض فقال ما لي فيه من الاجر ما يزن هذا العود فقلت يا ابا عبد الرحمن لم تقول هذا؟ قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول او قال من ضرب مملوكا او حدا لم ياته او لطم وجهه فكفارته فكفارته ان يعتق ان يعتق سو ابن عمر رضي الله عنه هذا السليف سو هي قول هم ها And he told him, expose your back. So he showed his back and he had hit him. So he told him, is it hurting you? Then Umar asked the slave. He said, no. So he let him go free. Even though it wasn't hurting. That means when he hit him, it wasn't very tough hitting. That the slave was not hurt. But yet Ibn Umar let him free. Then he said, ما لي فيه من الأجر ما يزن هذا العود. He got the little uh, stick from the ground and he said, I do not accept Allah to reward me anything for letting him free. Because to free a slave is a great reward from Allah. But Ibn Umar says, I do not expect anything from Allah for freeing him. So the person who was there, uh, Zadan, he said, uh, Ya Aba Abdul Rahman, Kunyat Abdullah ibn Umar. Lima taqul Why are you saying that? Why you don't expect any reward for him? He said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, who hit his slave, haddan lam yadi, for no reason, and for a crime he did not commit, then let him, or he hits his face, then let him free him. The expiation is to free him. So Ibn Umar freed him because he thought he oppressed him 
for hitting him for no crime. For no crime. Maybe he thought he did something and then he found out that he did not do. Because you should know the Sahaba will not be hitting their slaves after all the orders from the Prophet وسلم, huh? just for the sake of hitting. He thought the slave did something and then he found out he didn't. He thought the slave stole and then he found the, the thing somewhere else. He thought, so it's Bishubha. Huh? Because of some confusion, he hit him. Okay? And then immediately they will let them go. So this is Kama Nakul and how as we say before, Ya Lahu Min Deen Aw Kana Lahu Rijal. What a deen. If it has real people to carry it on, to represent it. This deen is great. This deen has came to detail and to instruct the lives of people in every single aspect. Someone might say, why this guy is reading this hadith about slavery? We don't have slaves. If this is the mercy of this deen with the slaves. So imagine the mercy of this deen with those that you are responsible of and you are in charge of. This is slavery in Islam. And we will come into a hadith huh, where the Prophet ﷺ praised the slaves huh, and how he gets rewarded twice. And Rawi al Hadith Abu Huraira and then Abu Huraira at the end of the hadith he said huh, he wished if he was a slave. Abu Huraira. What kind of deen where the free people worship their slaves? This is the deen of al Islam. So when you hear slavery and your religion allows slavery, then you're now you know understand what it means and we will see more. We will see with the food and we will see with the clothes. How the Sahaba dealt with their slaves. How the one of them will buy a garment for him and will buy the same one for his slave. He will not eat until he gets his slave to eat with him. The slave brings the food, he will make sure that he eats from it before he eats. This is the deen of Islam. Hmm? This is the deen that is being found everywhere by the kuffar and by the munafiqeen everywhere their goal in this line is to make sure that this deen does not stand up again but I have Allah ghalibun ala amri Allah ghalib ala amri at the end they don't understand and they do not want to understand and they do not want to comprehend that this is the deen of Allah and Allah is more powerful than any of their plots وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plot and Allah plots and Allah got the best plots قُلُوا قَوْلِ هَذَا مُسْتَقْبِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيْدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله